Good morning. I'm sure that most of us will remember uh, cartoon characters with an angel on one shoulder and a devil on the other shoulder. And the devil was portrayed as this little guy all dressed in red, uh, maybe carrying a pitchfork uh, with a sneer on his face or a beguiling smile. But is the devil real? Well, today we'll look at what the Bible tells us about this character. My name is Ellen Cusack. I am the pastor of Alloway United Methodist Church in Canton United Methodist Church. And we're so happy that you can be with us. Alloway uh, is meeting in person. If you would ever like to join us, they meet at 11 o'clock on Sunday mornings. And Canton uh, meets at 9 o'clock on Sunday mornings. So uh, before we start talking about our topic for today, our question for today, let's pray. Father, uh, we thank you for your presence with us. Father, we're thankful that uh, you gave us your word, Lord, that you want us uh, to know the truth in all things. Father, I pray that as we're together, your Holy Spirit would be poured out upon us in the different places that we are. Father, we pray for those today who are suffering, um, who've had... Uh, who've suffered losses of family members, Lord, uh, who were sick, who were lonely. Father, uh, we know that we need you. Be with us today, Father, and I ask that it would be your words in my mouth, and we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Today, the scripture that we'll read will be from 1 Peter. And 1 Peter's in the New Testament. We'll be reading from chapter 5, verses 8 through 11. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same type of sufferings. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Well, we have been... Um, examining different questions of faith this summer. And even though uh, we don't know all the answers, I certainly don't have all the answers, we know um, a God that does. Well, in the ver very beginning of the Bible, um, in Genesis 3, a serpent appears to Eve to tempt her to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Um, we read that he was more crafty than the other animals in the garden. And he misquoted God's words to Eve, and Eve fell to his temptation. And the rest, as they say, is history. Well, the book of Ezekiel, also in the Old Testament, tells us that the devil was created as an angel, perfect in beauty. And I would like to read some of this for you. It says, you were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God, every precious stone adorned you, cornelian, chrysolite, emerald, topaz, onyx, jasper, lapis lazuli, turquoise, and beryl. Your settings and mount mountings were made of gold. 
on the day you were created, they were prepared. You were anointed as a guardian cherub, for so I ordained you. You were on the holy mount of God, and you walked along the fiery stones. You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created till wickedness was found in you. Through your widespread trade, you were filled with violence, and you sinned. So I drove you in disgrace from the mount of God, and I expelled you, guardian cherub, from among the fiery stones. Your heart became proud on account of your beauty, and you corrupted your wisdom because of your splendor. So I threw you to the earth. I made a spectacle of you before kings. By your many sins and dishonest trade, you have desecrated your sanctuaries. So I made a fire come out from you, and I consumed you, and I reduced you to ashes on the ground in the sight of all who were watching. All the nations who knew you are appalled at you. You have come to a horrible end, and you will be no more. That's from Ezekiel 28. Well, if we go on in Isaiah, Isaiah describes how God cast him down to earth because he sinned. And Satan said, I will ascend to the heavens. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. So we know that in spite of Satan's desire to be more powerful than God or sit higher um, than God, um, we know that he does only what God allows him to do. If you uh, remember Job, Job was um, a great lover of God. And it was only with God's permission that Satan could touch Job. Twice, Satan came to God to petition to destroy Job, but God wouldn't allow him to take Job's life. And instead, Job was blessed and everything that he had lost was returned to him. So we can see that the Old Testament, that is the part of the Bible that is before uh, Christ's birth, um, gives us the history of Satan, but what does the New Testament say? Well, interestingly enough, every New Testament writer acknowledges the existence of Satan, and Jesus himself acknowledged and taught the existence of Satan. In Matthew 13, in the explanation of the power, parable of the weeds, um, Jesus describes the devil as the one who sows weeds that are the people of the devil. In a conversation with his disciples, um, when the disciples were so excited that the demons submitted to them, Jesus cautions them by explaining how he saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. He tells them to be excited instead that their names were written in the book of life. So we looked at the Old Testament. We looked at the New Testament. We can see that there's biblical evidence of the existence of Satan or the devil. But the question, why do we need to know that Satan is real? What difference does it make to us? Well, Satan's work was interfering with the work of believers and the work of God. So Christ came to destroy the devil's work. 1 John 3 tells us, The one who does what is sinful is of the devil, because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. But we also need to know what actions we are to take regarding the devil. Um, we read that we are to uh, be alert, be of sober mind, 
because you are our enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Um, 1 John 4 tells us that Jesus is greater than the devil, the one who is in the world. But we need to have a healthy respect for the devil. Jude tells us that the archangel Michael did not confront Satan about disputing um, about the body of Moses except using God's name. Secondly, we are to evaluate our lives and avoid situations where we might be tempted. In the Christian life, we have freedom, but we need to watch our lives. We need to watch our actions. What we do affects other people in addition to ourselves. Um, we are to resist the devil by submitting to God. Uh, we read, resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. Um, were to resist the devil. Um, James 4 tells us that um, God makes it clear that sin is something to be avoided and that we are to confess our sin to keep ourselves clean, um, to be holy before God. Um, we are to be strong in the Lord and mighty in his power. And so serious is this ad admonition that we're told to be prepared by wearing the full armor of God. Um, in Ephesians 6, we're told that our struggles aren't again against flesh and blood, but against the powers of the dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. There are things that go on in the spirit world that we um, are not aware of, uh, spiritual warfare. Um, I know that if I was sent somewhere um, as a representative of the United States, and upon my arrival, if I was issued armor, I would take that risk very seriously. <laughs> Well, as Christians, we need to take seriously the threat of Christ while knowing Christ has overcome the world. We're told, therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you've done everything, to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist and the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. While Christ is more powerful than the devil and is victorious over evil, we are still to be prepared for the battle. And we should take this instruction seriously, but not fearfully. And we should be careful when we joke about the power of evil. Um, Satan isn't this cute little cartoon character, but instead he's an adversary of God. We shouldn't be involved in activities that promote the devil, but instead boldly follow God. As we see what happens around the world, we remember how Satan told God that he'd been roaming around the earth when before he came to talk to God about Job. And while we know that as Christians we are tempted by the devil, we also know that the Holy Spirit strengthens us for the fight. 
The devil is real, but God is almighty. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you want us to know the truth. We thank you that we can go to your word, Lord, and uh, read what you have said, that your Holy Spirit um, teaches us. Father, we ask that you would continue to teach us. Lord, be patient with us. And Lord, help us to diligently seek you. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in the Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.